Hey everybody. Well, I know it's been, what, two or three weeks since I've done a video? Something like that. It's not because I haven't been working on the airplane, it's just I just didn't feel like making a video. I'm not sure why. Um, I have gotten so much stuff done in the past few weeks, but I have not worked on it at all really during the week. It's just been the past few weekends. We're very, very productive. And during the week, I just come home from work and watch TV and go to bed. That's just the way it is. So, where are we now? Lots and lots of stuff has been done to the point where the fuselage is actually final sanded and ready for covering. So that's, that's pretty exciting right there. So where we left off last time? Um, as you can see, we have some pretty nice fillets here. And even on the bottom, I mentioned I wasn't going to do a belly pan because of how well the, the uh, back of the wing fit to the fuselage. But it needed one up here to fill this in. And will you look at that? That just looks really nice. See how the bottom, the bottom part of the belly pan here kind of just blends in with the wing fillet. Not too shabby. So, how did I do that? Well... First of all, I started by doing this piece here, which is just, this is just literally a glob, a giant glob that I smushed on there of that uh, uh, 3M spackle I've been using. So what I did is this part of the fuselage up here, anywhere I didn't want this to stick on the fuselage, I wrapped with saran wrap and put just a light little coat of Vaseline on it. Then when I put the wing in place, I just smeared this on there and kind of leveled it out and partially shaped it um, with a with a putty knife. Let it dry. This because it's a lightweight spackle, it took a it took about three days before I could really sand on it because this stuff dries really quick when you're just doing you know stuff like this. But when you got you know damn near a half inch of this stuff, it takes quite a while for it to harden up. Um, but yeah, when I put it on there, just uh, in the up in the corners here, I mean, literally, this contours my finger absolutely perfect because that's how I did it. And it's it's the cheapest and easiest way I know how to do it. There are other uh, materials that you can use that are a lot faster, a lot harder. Um, but this is cheap, super easy to sand. And once I get it to where I like it, I start. I just pour a bunch of thin CA on it. I wrap two fingers with wax paper and I, and I, and I thin it out. So the thin CA kind of wicks into the spackle, wicks into the pores, it hardens it. Now it's as hard as a rock and will accept covering perfectly. So that's that. And I did some more filling on the bottom where I glassed the center section of the wing. So now you don't feel any of the glass, any of the epoxy. That's just all good to go. Now these bad boys here were a little bit of a different story. Now I mentioned in the past and in past videos you can see in here that the, the wing really does not make contact with the fuselage sides which would typically be a wing saddle. So the way I did these fillets here, trying to see which one has more material exposed Okay, here we go. Now you can kind of see the outline of a piece of balsa right here. So this kind of a triangle piece right here is a piece of balsa that I, you know, kept modifying and cutting into shape and, uh, and bent it into a, you know, kind of a shape like yay, like a half moon, and just set it in place and got it roughly where I wanted it and tacked it. So it's just barely over the trailing edge of the wing. Then once I did that, I did the same thing on the bottom with another piece of balsa right here with the grain running the opposite direction so I can get it to, uh, you know, shape this way around. And I just made the back portion of what the wing fillet is supposed to be. So you can see the wing fits in there. Got a little bit of a, of a lip, of a ridge right here, but 
I'm not worried about it. It's, it's fine. I was going to blend all this in, but you know, you're not going to see this anyway. So once I did that, I had two pieces of wood glued to the back of the airplane, just like that. And then up here was just where the fuselage meets the wing. So once again, I covered the wing with uh, saran wrap with a light coat with just a light smear of uh, Vaseline on it. And then I bolted the wing to the fuselage and I actually had it sitting, you know, right here where it's at. And once again, using that lightweight spackle, well, I guess let me back up here. Um, you can see it's got a straight line here and kind of a, you know, a, an even radius all the way around. Before I put the spackle material in place, I put a piece of masking tape right here where I wanted the, uh, the fillet to end, and the same up here, all the way around to the front. So I had two pieces of masking tape to give me the overall outline that I wanted. And then I just took uh, my putty knife and that spackle and just started smushing it into place. Just kind of mushing it in there. Got a lot more than I needed. Then using, my, using the edge of the, trot, the putty knife, I started scraping away just to where the tape line is, both on the fuselage and on the wing. So now I had a bunch of the spackling material where I wanted it, but now I got to get that spackle into that nice shape. So what I did then is took the back side of a spoon and started up here using the spoon to give it the shape. Then as I got back here, I started leveling the spoon out, which gave it a wider radius and just kept kind of going back and forth over it until I got the rough shape that I liked. So this is literally just spackle overlapping those two balsa pieces back here that I put on first. And it's quite easy to do. And the beautiful thing is it's cheap. And if you screw up, it's no big deal. And the same up here for the front. I, I smoothed it out with a spoon until about here. Uh, just lick the end of my finger and then smooth it out. And once you sand everything away that you don't want, you have this perfect fillet that matches the bottom of my uh, uh, belly pan fillet, if that's what you want to call it. And you can, as you can see, it blends in just beautifully. Um, but the downside to using the spackle is it's very soft. So for areas like this, um, up here it's not so bad, The back here it's very thin. So this is glassed, both top and bottom is glassed with uh, 0.75 cloth, and top side has two coats of resin to really get it nice and smooth so it can accept covering and look nice, and the bottom just has the one uh, coat of resin just to adhere it to the bottom of the spackle. So now, this is basically a composite piece, hard as a rock. As you can see, it blends perfectly. Just took a little bit of final sanding to get to where I want it. And because the top surface is a really nice, smooth um, resin, uh, covering will stick to it just fine. wonder what I'm watching in there. What am I watching in there? I don't even know what's on TV. I just heard a noise, so I had to go look. Anyways, so what else has been done? Well, the wing has been finished to a certain extent. We now have wing tips, fully shaped, blend in just beautifully. This has got to be one of the straightest wings I have ever built. Look down that trailing edge. That is just crazy. Normally, I have a really good act for uh, building crooked wings. I have cut out the aileron, beveled it, hinged it, and they turned out absolutely perfect. So I got that done. The cowl has been finished. Um, nose, the, uh, as you can see, the front here is a separate piece, which is just a, I don't know if you want to call it a nose bowl, a nose ring, whatever. Nose ring, I don't think we're going to call it that. 
Uh, got that all on there, all finished. Um, engine looks good in there, fits in there just fine. I got everything nice and straight, that's good. This has all been glassed with the uh, 0.75 glass cloth. Two coats to get it nice and smooth. Um, it blends into the fuselage really well. So that's going to look good once it's covered. I've made my entry points for my... Yeah, that's that's just discoloration of the wood. That's not a giant hole. Uh, entry points for my uh, ball driver to attach the cowl. And the fun part of the cowl was making this, uh, this vent right here. Uh, or scoop, if you will. And this is scale, and it's functioning the same way it would on the full scale. Let's see if we can peek up in there. On the full scale, this is where the exhaust came out. And on this one, it's going to be the same thing. Not only is the exhaust going to come out of here, but my vent line and my fill line for my fuel tank are going to come out of here too. So all the slobbery goodness from that glow engine is going to come out right here onto the bottom of the airplane. Um, which is another reason why I have done a lot of glassing and resin up in this area here, because this is where the brunt of the glow fuel is going to hit. So I want this to be nice and solid. So that looks good. Perfect. That turned out, I was very pleased on how that scoop turned out. Might be able to see, yeah, there we go. So you can see how it just everything is going to dump right out the bottom there. So that turned out well. Um, I haven't done any kind of a cockpit yet. All I did is I extended this area here, so kind of where the uh, the instrument panel would be. This is all rounded and shaped and obviously painted uh, a matte black. I did paint the inside white. Uh, as you can see, not all of it is white. You can see this little shelf right here, because right here is where a floor is going to mount to it. So you won't see any of this. I just haven't made that yet. So there might be a little bit more of a cockpit interior there might not I don't know but that will all mount to this uh, floor that doesn't exist yet so you can look back there it's all white um, before I cover the fuselage I do need to install the front windscreen I still haven't quite decided how I'm gonna do it you know I, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna have to glue it on in sections because even though it wraps around and it's got Three screws holding it here, one here, and then three on each side here. But these screws are only there to hold it in place while I'm gluing it on. Because once it's off, this area is going to be covered with, uh, it's going to have some alum some uh, vinyl tape to, co to connect the transfer from the covering to the windscreen itself. Because the covering is going to come up and overlap the plastic. Then I'll put a piece of vinyl over it. And the same down here, this will have a vinyl strip that goes all the way around. Then once that's done, I'm going to mask the area because this, on the windscreen, there's actually a white area that goes up and kind of kicks out up here. So it's all going to get blended in with paint. So um, you won't see any of these tabs that I put in there. Those will all be covered up by uh, uh, white paint. So. Those are just there to make it easier for me to actually mount the windscreen. Haven't figured out exactly how I'm going to do the, the, the four side windows, but I'm not going to do those until after the plane's covered anyway. So no big deal there. I got plenty of time to figure out what I want to do about those. So that's where we're at. Um, I still, the wing is not final sanded. Um, my landing gear struts are being outsourced to a friend of mine right now and he's actually experimenting with uh, a CNC router and he's custom making me some somewhat scale uh, landing gear legs for this thing all out of aluminum so hopefully when those are finished up um, they sh they're gonna look freaking sweet on this airplane because that, that's one of the things this plane has a very distinct landing gear leg it's very bulky it's very uh, robust and it's a very unique shape for for what it is so just putting a landing gear leg with an axle on it wasn't gonna work 
So hopefully those will turn out just beautiful on this airplane. I assume they will. So yeah, that's where we're at. I may just cut off the video right here and post one next week. Um, or I might get these, uh, I want to get these covered first. I'm, this is going to be the first thing I'm going to do. Need a little bit more sanding there. Um, I want to get these out of the way. Cover these fillets blue. I want to get that out of the way so bad. Because that's uh, the least amount of fun. So, back to work. Later. Okay. So, since I shut the camera off, it's been about two hours that it has taken me to uh, cover this. I haven't done the other side yet, but uh, with a lot of patience, a little bit of know-how and technique, um, doing these concave fillets with monocoat is not too bad. Of course, the, the line up here is kind of, you know, it, the color scheme all this will get blended up so um, the fact that it's not an even straight line going up around the fuselage is no big deal of course when it comes around to the wing all good and once you get into it it's not bad um, probably what took well obviously covering it took the longest but coming up with a good template for the piece that you're putting on there is very important now up in here you get quite a bit of wrinkles, I don't know. It's still going to take quite a bit of heat to get up in there and get those wrinkles out, but they uh, they will come out. And there's a few air bubbles because, you know, this whole thing is basically a, a composite piece. You know, it's all epoxy resin. And Monaco does stick to epoxy very, very well, but it takes a lot of heat and a lot of patience. So there we have it. looks really nice so I think that'll do it for now I'm gonna take a little bit of a break because this is very uh, mentally challenging and physically and men yeah, physically and mentally demanding to cover things like this and in order to be successful requires a template to give you the rough piece that needs to go around and a really, really nice trim iron. This is the old uh, Coverite trim iron with the uh, rounded tip. Absolutely fantastic. And of course, Old Faithful. So if, when you're doing these, um, I broke it up into two pieces right here where the fuselage splits and uh, angles this way. So I did do it in two pieces. Um, so for instance, when I put this piece on first, I started in the middle with the iron, kind of did a section here, then started feathering it out like this, then came up to the front, then started feathering it out. And anywhere there's little air bubbles, they're probably not the easiest to see in the camera. Yeah, you can just kind of see one right there. I take a very small hypodermic needle and just give it a little poke and hit it with the iron, and boom, it's gone. So not too bad. All right, I'm going to get back to work on this thing. Later.